those have been some of the nicer things that Ron Paul has said about the Fed by my next guest, of course, Texas Congressman Ron Paul, who has just been chosen by his colleagues to chair a subcommittee to oversee the Federal Reserve. Paul has introduced legislation to actually abolish the Fed and is also author of that book, End the Fed. And he joins us now from Clute, Texas, for his first interview uh, since the appointment. And uh, Congressman, uh, looking through the papers today, lots of headlines, of course, about your appointment, uh, saying that Ron Paul gets his dream job, uh, putting Ron <laughs> Paul, putting Ron Paul in overseeing the Fed is like a fox in charge of a hen house. Uh, Congressman, what is your first action going to be? Well, we'll probably think things through and not overdo things too soon. Well, you know, the uh, new session hasn't started yet. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll have plans for hearings to find out uh, how much information we can get. Obviously, it's very popular with the American people to audit the Fed, to know what they're doing. When they can spend trillions of dollars and we don't know where it goes, they have a bigger budget. They spend more money than the Congress does, and yet we have no oversight. It was never intended that a secret body like this could create money out of thin air and spend it, take care of some banks and big business and foreign banks right. and the American people struggle? I, I mean, uh, some, we have to look into it and we have to con start to consider reforms. Well, and I think, Congressman, in a way, you know, there are not that many people that are far apart from you who feel that the Fed uh, has gone into, you know, fiscal policy when really they should be sticking with monetary uh, policy. But prioritize for me exactly what you want to do first when you meet with the chairman of the Fed. I, I, I didn't get your last sentence. You faded away. Please, oh, again. What, what is, what is the, it's just prioritize for me what it is you want to do first when you meet Bernanke. Bernanke. Okay, I, I did hear that, but our volume all of a sudden dropped way off. Uh, what I want to do is uh, emphasize the oversight of the, the Federal Reserve. Pursue this idea of auditing the Fed. We have a right to know. Congress has an obligation to know. The people want to know, and Congress is behind us to, to, to do that right now. I think it's also very important for us to understand why monetary policy is so dangerous and why we should think about changing the Fed or getting rid of the Fed, and that is their contribution to unemployment, their contribution to the business cycle. Cool. They are the instigators of inflation. Mm -hmm. So for many, many years, until at least three years ago, they were always given the credit for boom times, and they were always thought that they could get us out of the bad times. But that no longer plays out because it isn't true. They give us the inflation, but then they also give us bubbles that eventually always burst. But, but we are now in a serious problem with the financial markets and the monetary markets, and already many people around the world are talking but, about monetary reform, the dollar will not last as a reserve standard. Right, and, and I know you've called for going back to the gold standard, but are you going to call for the abolishment of the Fed? Are you going to push that agenda? Not, not really, not, not right up front, but obviously that's the implication because even my book about ending the Fed, I talk about not, t t you know, turning the keys and locking the doors. I talk about a transition and I talk about uh, why don't we legalize the Constitution and allow legal tender to compete with paper money. Today it's the opposite. We are forced to use depreciating money and uh, they do a very good job at depreciating the money. At the same time, the Constitution still says that the only thing you're allowed to use is gold and silver. All I want to do is legalize that, and if, if nobody cares, if nobody likes gold and silver, they can keep investing That's a in paper right, assets right. You're, you're and just, put their savings accounts in paper money. Right, you're just saying that you just don't want to give the Fed this mandate to just print money out of thin air. Um, Congressman, just hang on, because uh, Barney Frank, who's the outgoing chairman of the Financial Services Committee, had this to say about you, and I just want you to listen to it. I disagree with Ron Paul Jews. I don't frankly think they're representative of most Republicans either. Uh, I think that's indicative of the kind of troubles they're going to have. What's your reaction to that? <laughs> Well, Barney and I are, are good friends, and we've talked about the Fed uh, a whole lot, and he, although didn't vote for auditing the Fed, he was very sympathetic, and we wouldn't have had that bill put into the uh, financial reform bill if it hadn't been for him, because he allowed it to come up. He could have prevented that. So uh, in many ways, uh, he's a subtle ally that he wants to know more about the Fed and look into the Fed, although his conclusions right, but, 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 on right, but, but, uh, what to do with the monetary policy wouldn't be the same. Right, but what he's saying is basically that if you push too hard, you're not going to get any support then. 
Well, I, I think uh, I think that's good advice. I think you know, if next week I order issued a subpoena, uh, you know, for such and such, I I, I don't think that would be met with uh, you, you know a good acceptance. And and you know, it, it's not like not like I'm a powerful person. You know, my ideas are powerful, but I'm not a powerful person. There's a committee chairman and there's a speaker of the house. I'm, I'm realistic and I know what that means. Right. But I also know the strength of ideas and the power of ideas, and that's what will prevail. So it wasn't my political power that prevailed last year to get 320 co-sponsors of Iron Fed. It was the power of the ideas, and, and that's that's what they ought to worry about because okay. we're going to be talking about ideas and proving the fallacy and, of the Fed and paper money. Uh, Congressman, Congressman, have you met Bernanke? Have you met the Fed chairman? Not, not in a personal way. I, I probably have shaken hands with him, I think. But no, I only meet him at the committee hearings. I haven't been invited to breakfast yet. <laughs> okay, well, you've got a bit more power <laughs> now. I, I think. will be. I, I think you might be able to do that. Um, and just one last question, Congressman. I cannot leave you without asking you about the tax plan uh, that is being put through right now. Um, uh, do you expect that we are finally going to get that passed before the end of this year? I, I, I would suspect so, but of course I don't, I don't know the answer since a lot of other people who are more in the know than I am, they don't know either. But I think it will be tragic for the economy if taxes go up at the beginning of the year for everybody. I think that would be very, very bad. Congressman, we'll leave it there, but always great to have you on our program. Please come back again. Congressman Ron Paul. Thank you. Just appointed to the Oversight Committee of the Fed. And